Thanks for tuning in to this latest video weather briefing recorded on October 10th, 2015. In this briefing, we're going to take a look at El Nino and the winter weather outlook. El Nino, it's important to remember, is not rain and it's not a specific storm. In fact, what El Nino is, is sea surface temperatures that are above normal in the Pacific Ocean. However, what happens is that the warm ocean temperatures when they're still present during the winter, interact with our normal jet stream that goes west to east across the Pacific. This actually draws the jet stream further south, so taking it from Oregon and Washington, where it usually likes to hang out, and bringing it across Southern California and Northern Mexico into Texas, as shown here. So what El Nino can do, the warm sea surface temperatures, is basically change our storm track and bring us more storms during the winter, not necessarily stronger storms, but more storms and more frequent storms from that storm track or that jet stream as shown here. We'll take a little, little deeper look in El Nino. Okay, is this what we're going to expect for the upcoming season? Well, it's quite possible for Southern California as we have a very good correlation to at least the strong El Ninos. How does El Nino form? Well, first of all, El Nino isn't global warming. These warm surface temperatures in the ocean, they come from the Western Pacific. What happens is too much warmth builds up in the Western Pacific, showers, thunderstorms form, and that sends out airflow from west to east across the equator. Those waves of air effectively shut off the trade winds or the normal easterly winds that are occurring along the equator. That allows the water to warm up and basically hit South America and bounce backwards and remain in a large pool as shown here. So the removal of the easterly trade winds is basically a compensation of trying to redistribute too much moisture and heat in the Western Pacific. What happens is the most important thing afterwards is that this sea surface temperature interacts with our atmosphere and draws the jet stream further south. Okay, here's what the jet stream normally looks like during a strong El Nino on the right-hand side, a direct path across central Southern California. On the left-hand side is the jet stream pattern over the past two years. Of course, the past two years have not been normal. It's been the most historical drought on record. You can see the storm track has completely missed us over the past two years or so. What's going on now in the Pacific Ocean? Well, we have several areas of warm water, the so-called blobs, and we have the El Nino zone. The El Nino zone is what we'll focus on here, but the blob regions could also be a player in some of our storm systems once they get going. Our friends at the University of California, San Diego at Scripps did some research. On the left-hand side, they show that in El Nino, the blue shaded areas have the best correlation. You can see San Diego County has a very good correlation to have rainfall and El Nino. Northern California, not so much, and in some cases, no correlation. In the middle image, labeled B, that's the wettest storm. So those are the biggest storms in California, the top 5%, the Pineapple Express, atmospheric river, the really big events, and they also have no correlation in the Sierra Nevada and less correlation to El Nino in some of our mountains in Southern California. However, the remaining storms on the right-hand side, the rest of the 95% of storms, do bring quite a bit of correlation to El Nino. But again, notice it's very specific to Southern California, including the deserts of the Southwest. Okay, here's what we typically see with El Nino. In October, the storm pattern begins to set up across California. And what ends up happening is Northern California, as shown here in the upper left, tends to be wetter than normal. So not just normal, but wetter than normal. Also a wet signal for Arizona and extreme Southeastern California. When you go into November, you can see the whole state of California pretty much gets in on it and being wetter than normal. So not just normal precipitation, but above normal. The atmosphere tends to reset in December, and you can see there's a signal of it going across Southern California, Texas, and through Florida as we get into December. Then January, it reloads across Northern California, 
but continues across the southern states such as Texas and the Gulf of Mexico. And then look at February and March for strong El Ninos. They tend to be very wet. And this is important because with El Nino, not only do you have more storms, more frequent storms, not necessarily stronger ones, and you also have a winter that continues well into the spring. So you have a prolonged winter pattern. Here's what El Nino currently looks like, and it is rather strong in the area shown under the rectangle. The blob area remains pretty powerful too, very anomalously warm water extending up towards the Baja region in California Bight. That El Nino zone is going to be our big player for the winter. What we also see is deep down in the ocean that there's significant reservoir of warmer than normal water. So this tells us that El Nino should not fall apart this fall and it should remain at its current level of being strong. And in this case, because of all the warm water that is underneath yet to come up. Here are the latest numbers and El Nino is at 2.4 Celsius. That's a big number. On a scale of zero to three, three being off the charts, zero being no effect or no El Nino, neutral, 2.4 is a number that rivals back in 1997 to 98 winter. You can see it's been on a steady climb since May of this year. Here's the actual forecast for Southern California. The darkest shaded area is where the most confidence is for much wetter than normal and above normal in precipitation. That extends from Orange and San Diego coast all the way through our deserts out to Phoenix. Here is a summary for you about what we talked about. Moderate El Nino conditions exist. We can't call it strong at the moment because we need three months consecutive, but we are working towards that and it continues to slowly strengthen. Very good chance we'll see strong El Nino conditions develop this fall. The blob of warm water, such as in the California Bight and the Eastern Pacific, that actually can help enhance storms or bring higher rainfall rates due to increased instability. Remember, the blob was formed from the lack of storms. And so that result of warmly warm water can actually enhance our storms once they get going. El Nino at a strong phase correlates to above normal precipitation in Southern California, but not necessarily the whole state. We have seen actually very dry years from El Nino, such as 65, 66 in Northern California. El Nino can bring impact to the jet stream and bring more frequent storms, not necessarily bigger storms and not necessarily anything like the Pineapple Express, but it brings more storms as the jet stream sets up over us. El Nino does not guarantee above normal precipitation and there have been several dry years or even average years such as 1972-73. That was an average year even in Southern California, despite being a strong El Nino. Drought will continue. And it's important to remember that we're at a four plus year deficit and we've missed one to two seasons of precipitation across the entire state. So even though significant rainfall is expected and much improved snowpack, in some case significant in Southern California, the drought will linger into next year. All right, here are some of the impacts and actions Moderate snow levels are expected, so El Nino is not your tropical storms and very high snow levels. Important to note. It's also not Arctic, very cold storms. We do expect the potential for flooding to be elevated. This will be rivers, urban, small areas from the repeated storms and saturated soils just getting too much rain. Beach and coastal erosion will be high from the elevated surf, pounding waves and wind. Now's the time for everyone to do their part and work with Public Works in cleaning storm drains and removing debris from around your home and business. If you do live near a slope or downstream of known debris flows or fire scars, excessive rain and saturated soil could cause some land and debris movement. Check your homeowner insurance to see if you have flood coverage. It's an extra benefit that you have to pay for, though it is rather um, affordable. If you are in a floodplain or if you don't know, check out the link here to see on the map if you are possibly in or near a known floodplain. 